G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. Today we're going to talk about signal to noise ratio. What is signal to noise ratio? Well, this is signal and this is noise. And this is a ratio. You put them all together and you get a bad photo. If you're an astrophotographer and you've been trying to get the best out of your images and your exposures, you've probably heard about this term signal to noise ratio and want to know what it means and how you can apply it to what you do. Uh, there are plenty of online calculators out there which will help you calculate it. But you know what these online calculators don't do? They don't make your images better. Only you can do that. So sit back, relax, open an overpriced can of your favourite hipster beer and let me, your best friend, explain my limited understanding of a highly technical concept. And whatever you do, don't skip the ad for High Point Scientific. If you skip the ad, so help me God, I will find you. And I will kick your tripod. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Signal to noise ratio is easy. Look, got it? Good. So easy, I don't know why people just don't do it in their heads. We don't need online calculators for that. All you do to solve for signal is divide signal by the noise. Signal is all the stuff we want. Stars, nebula, galaxy, all the real signal. And noise is the stuff we don't want. Just one number by the other, right? Uh, except you've also got all sorts of different kinds of noise. You've got read noise, shot noise, you've got the sky glow, and then you put all this together and then you still get the wrong answer because there's all these other nuances like gain and squared or... It's simple math. Simple. There are lots of good signal to noise ratio calculators out there. One good one is uh, one from Deep Sky Detail. Uh, he has a series of videos explaining SNR and going deep into the maths that he used to build his calculator. But I wanted to do something a bit different. Here's the thing that I hate about the online calculators. They all basically model a theoretical perfect universe and it really doesn't reflect the real world very well. Often they're really hard to use and they have all sorts of assumptions straight up front that might be difficult for a beginner to understand what they need to put in in order to get an accurate SNR signal to noise ratio number. If you put in all the information correctly, you should see a theoretical line going up that shows that as you stack the exposures, your signal to noise ratio gets better. But you know what's easier than the signal to noise ratio calculators where you have to know all this stuff up front is there's a script in PixInsight where you can just apply it to the script and it will tell you the number. Open your image, run the script, get the magic number. <coughs> Boom! But what in God's name does this number actually mean? I'm no mathematician, but I know what a ratio is. And that doesn't look like a ratio, that looks like a single number. A ratio is like 1 to 10, where you've got 10 signal for one noise, 10% noise. That's a ratio. And this number is expressed in decibels, huh? This is a quirk from the history of signal to noise ratio processing and the fact that we applied it to audio first. So what we're getting is a volume but that doesn't even tell us the ratio of the noise to the volume. It's kind of dumb. I feel like a ratio would be better, but I digress. Long story short, the signal to noise ratio number is meant to represent quality. It's a quality measurement, a quality number. The higher the number, the more quality there is of your image. Easy. In my attempt to understand signal to noise ratio, I thought I'll just build my own calculator because I wanted to do things a little bit differently and I wanted the user to have less upfront knowledge to be able to use the calculator in the first place. All the calculators that I see online ask you to basically fill in all the input variables so that it just runs the maths and gives you a perfect theoretical result based on all these perfect theoretical inputs. I'd rather have one like PixInsight where I can just give it the image and say, tell me the SNR. So I got to work in PHP because I am a web developer and I thought, I can do this. And then I realized in about five minutes that PHP is not going to do this. I can't read a fit file in PHP. It has no sort of internal understanding about astronomy at all. So what I needed to do was actually write it in Python because Python has AstroPy, which is a library which does understand fit files and image processing to some degree so that we can get some measurements out of the fit file and give us a signal to noise ratio calculation. Problem is, I've never used Python before. <sighs> So I got to work, I ran up an Amazon AWS server, I installed Python and I installed AstroPy and it has all these inbuilt functions for median and standard deviation Boring. and mean. Boring. You don't care about the maths in the background or the code, right? You're an astrophotographer, you just want that magic number. Well, some astrophotographers care about the math. <laughs> they care a lot. Anyway, look at all of this code I wrote in a language that I only learned yesterday. Ha <laughs> ha, fig jam. Not really, I asked ChatGPT to do it and then I spent four days arguing with ChatGPT about why its results were wrong and then had to fix its hallucinations and go by the code line by line to actually make it do the thing that I wanted it to do. So now I have this tool here which you can check yourself and upload an uncalibrated FITS file and I'll keep it running for a little while until I get bored which could be like tomorrow. 
The point of this is not an ideal exposure calculator, but to get a more accurate signal to noise ratio based on your actual data, not some fictional variables you plug in at the start, and it will do this. And actually, you know what? I know this is not the best, most robust script, but I think my script is giving more accurate results than the PixInsight script, maybe. Here's my signal to noise ratio result for a recent M8 exposure. The PixInsight script is in the same ballpark. My calculation says 28 decibels, PixInsight says 34 decibels. Now Market Deep Sky Detail did some theoretical decibel levels to show what they actually look like, but actually signal to noise ratio measures quality relative to itself. It's part of the problem of having this one number that we consider quality. It's not a good accurate representation of quality across a range of different images and equipment. Math, if I do stack all the images and run the PixInsight SNR tool again, I get a higher number, closer to 50. And that kind of matches my data that I'm getting out of the script that I wrote. This is what my graph shows is possible, in theory, with the stacking. And the code in the equation that manages the stacking side of thing as well, it also assumes that all noise is random and that it will be averaged down. So the equation is pretty simple. Again, it's based on this perfect mathematical universe. You see, the problem is this. Both the tool that I wrote, which scans your image and makes some assumptions based on that image and the metadata in the image and the pixel values that it's detecting and PixInsight, which is meant to be doing the same thing, neither of these tools actually knows what's signal and what's not signal. They are making mathematical assumptions based on standard deviation, median, mean. PixInsight's not going into my image and going, well, that looks like a star and this looks like a piece of noise and this pixel has a reading of a thousand. There is no way for the software to actually know any of that. So it just models that based on its assumptions about noise and sky glow and all the other inputs you put in in the first place. Both softwares have no idea what it's looking at. It's just doing the math. And this became even more clear to me when I asked the PixInsight SNR script to measure this super dirty, super low signal subframe of the Leo's triplet I took with a QHY12 about 10 years ago. It thinks that this piece of shit is 42 decibels in all channels. That's insane and wrong and it's rubbish. I'm human, you're human too, I assume. And you can look at this image and you know that it has a worse signal to noise ratio than this really clean subframe that I took of M8 this year with a better camera. You can see intuitively that there's more noise in one image and not the other. So this signal to noise ratio script is not really giving me a good indication of quality at all. Maybe to itself, and if I stack the image, that number will go up, but not to other images. My version, which makes some basic assumptions and has some bare minimum knowledge about the image first, and then pulls the rest out of the metadata and its averaging pixel values, makes a pretty good guess, and it measures this more accurately down at 24, which is less than the M8 image. So I think my script is working pretty good. Still too high, in my opinion. But this is because SNR kind of sucks as a real world measure of quality. Look, astrophotographers love to bang on about signal to noise ratio, and it matters. It's the premise of why this all works. It's why stacking works. But is that actually important to know or care about? I looked at a bunch of real world data from friends on Discord who were quick to answer the call when I said, I need some data. And they're like, I have data. Thanks dudes. So there are examples where the SNR graph levels off and because of your conditions, because of your camera sensitivity, dimness of the object, perhaps you can't reach the signal to noise ratio that you want. And the only way to improve this is not by tweaking parameters in a calculator. I mean, we can talk about the calculations all you want. At the end of the day, Take long exposures, take a lot of exposures, stack those exposures, get, make sure you take those exposures from a darker site. And guess what? Your signal to noise ratio will improve. That's not rocket science. You can't lose. Is SNR important? I mean, yeah, but do you need to know how it works? Not really. Does an athlete need blood? Yes. But does the athlete need to be a blood oxygen scientist? No. She just has to run fast. I'll keep this tool up and you can have a play with it and see what you think. But like all calculators, the disclaimer is this isn't 100% accurate and no calculator for SNR ever will be 100% accurate. But it does give you a good idea. And it's sort of limited in utility in that, yeah, it'll give you this graph showing it going up and it tapering off. You can sort of work out your point of diminishing returns. But that graph is gonna look the same for everyone. The difference is where the decibel level gets to a point that you're happy with, but that decibel level is going to be different depending on your stuff and your target and all sorts of other different variables. So I wouldn't hang my hat on any particular decibel number. 
just get more data. Stop worrying about SNR and the maths and just do the best you can with your equipment. You know what to do already to make your images better. If you want to get better images, you can spend all your time playing with SNR calculators online or you go to High Point Scientific and buy a better telescope, buy a better camera. Uh, they have a price match guarantee and they support their product and they ship anywhere in the world now, which is great. They've been supporting this channel for a long time and the links are down below. You can use High Point Scientific to buy basically any brand and even rebuild my particular setup in the observatory. So build your own observatory and get a fantastic signal to noise ratio. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not a maths guy or a Python guy really, so it was weird like to get my head around the equations and figure out why my numbers weren't agreeing with other calculators 100%. And then I realized that it really depends on all those input variables. So I banged my head against the wall for a long time, but I'm pretty happy with the tool overall. I just don't think that it's something I'll keep up forever because it's kind of pointless. Maybe I could upgrade it and add some more insights based on the data we can pull out of the images. I don't know, I'll play with it. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments what, uh, what you think I should do, what you would like a tool to do. But I like the idea of instead of having basic assumptions up front, just give it the data and let it pull those assumptions and variables out of the data itself and then do the rest of the calculation. That's my approach anyway. Hopefully someone smarter than me can take that ball and run with it. Anyway, that's it. While I was filming this video, um, this happened. This happened. The channel has hit 50,000 subscribers, which is amazing. 50,004. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. Ah, uh, astrophotography. It's a journey, and I hope your journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die.